The other day I was perusing LinkedIn and I saw, oh, look at this interesting cute little globe. And I've seen it around too. It gives me a Richard Eddy's Harrison kind of vibe who would actually use a physical globe reference that he would photograph and then paint the top. But wouldn't it be cool if we could make a cute little tactile globe and then share any number of stock photo extracts with our graphic design friends? It's a rainy fall day here in Michigan, but I kind of like that. It gives my hair more body. So grab a cup of coffee or a hot chocolate or an Oktoberfest, depending on the time of day and your inclination, and join Pepper and I as we try to reverse engineer this stock art globe. We'll start with this beautiful resource created by Tom Patterson. We'll undo the default overrides that Pro applies to it when you load it. We'll put it into a 3D globe perspective. We'll give it that nice blue background. And we'll exaggerate the elevation because that's nice and cool looking. And then we'll play with the red, green, and blue gamma values. I mean, obviously we're gonna do some hill shade and more hill shade. And then we'll add a faded layer and then another faded layer. And then we'll add in a, a vibrant gradient ocean and a vibrant land to match our reference. We'll give it some papery texture because that makes it look like something you wanna just reach out and touch. And then we'll give it a kind of a specular shimmer in the top right. Well, here we are in ArcGIS Pro, the big blank empty 2D map. And I'm going to add to this Tom Patterson's gorgeous natural earth land cover image. It's georeferenced geo tiff and by default it loads in like this even though its colors are quite different that's because pro wants to override some things and i'll change its resampling type to be cubic instead of nearest neighbor so you don't get the jaggies and i'll change the stretch type which is currently clipping off a good portion of all the data in this image to none and then lastly i'll set the the gamma value to the default of one. This is what Tom made, how it is supposed to look delivered from Tom. Now it's up to us to decide how to change it. Now, if I look at my reference image, I can see that uh, the colors aren't quite the same, obviously, but this is a good starting point. So I'll open the symbology and you can choose a gamma offset for each of the red, green, and blue color channels. I'm gonna leave it at gamma of one for red. I'm gonna lower the gamma to 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. Okay, now I've got something just nudged just a little bit closer. Now up here in the appearance tab, I'm gonna boost this brightness up to six. The reference image is a little bit washed out and kind of looks like that 1960s photography that we're shooting for. And now it's time for a world of 3D where we remove the starfield background and position it just so. Okay, sorry, I'm done. And we can make this extra bumpy by selecting the ground source and going into the appearance tab instead of a vertical exaggeration of one, which is no vertical exaggeration, this is the truth, we can lie and say it's actually 25 times taller than real life. We get something kind of bumpy and charming and globy. Speaking of vertical exaggeration, let's bring some more terrain into this, into this map. I'll add data and I'll add once again, a resource from Tom Patterson. This is Tom Patterson's world. We're just living in it. I'm, I'm gonna add a Prisma shaded relief. Tom Patterson ran his shaded relief through the Prisma, open source Prisma algorithm to give it a, a painterly angular perspective. And it worked out really well. And he shared that with us publicly, which was very generous of him. I'm going to set that stretch type to be none once more. And we'll change this color scheme and we'll bring the dark shadows up closer to the fore. And this light end, which is the, the highlights, instead of white, let's give this kind of a nice, uh, kind of Sahara sand sounds good. And then just to boost the highlights on this Prisma, we'll give this a little bit more room to shimmer and then we'll hit okay. Now I've got something kind of earthy and interesting with some bright white highlights. Let me zoom in for you. We're gonna use the overlay blend mode to bake those tones and hues into the imagery below. Before, after. Now we're getting somewhere. We're starting to kind of circle a tighter orbit around our reference graphic. We're getting there and it's so fun. I do wanna make some of these 
brighter areas pop a little bit more because the lighting is a bit more stark in our reference graphics. So I'm going to add yet another hill shade layer created by Tom. And this is his manual shaded relief. He actually hand brushed all of this beautiful terrain. Thank you again, Tom. And for our color scheme, instead of black to white, I'm going to only keep the highlights. So I'll make this fully transparent white in the shadow zone. The shadow zone. I'll drag it up to like, I don't know. That looks good. 58, okay. Okay, very cool. Um, a little bit too much now. I wanna make this a little bit subtler. So I'm gonna go back up to our layer blends and I'll just use overlay again. So it'll burn the brightness into the content below without actually covering it up. It's subtle, that's the name of the game. Okay, now I want to pull in this shadow that starts forming on the bottom half of this hemisphere because the lighting is top down and there's shading here in our reference graphics. So I'm going to add my favorite hack layer, which is global background. You can find it in Living Atlas, by the way. Global background, just how it sounds. A big old rectangle that covers the whole world. Now I'll dig into this symbol, go to the properties, and I'll come to the layers, uncheck this unnecessary outline, and I'll give this a gradient fill. You can see where I'm going here. I'll look at the pattern instead of buffered. I'll make it linear. Instead of discrete, bang, 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 I'll make it s continuous, which is smooth. And I'll go 100% of the globe's height. I think that's what that size value means. And I'll make this angle 270. So top, down, I'll show you what I've got so far. And I'll tweak this color scheme so that this low area will be black. And I'll bump this up and make it just the darkest blue possible and I'll bring this down and make it that same dark blue but I'll make it 100% transparent. See so now I've got black shadow to blue to fully transparent and this can you know be also transparent. I just don't want I don't want any shadow on the top half of the globe. Apply. Good we're getting some dome lighting in here and I'll go to my favorite feature right now which is layer blend and I'll give this my favorite blend, which is overlay there. Now we've got kind of a darkening pass on the bottom half of this globe. Time out. After doing all this, I realized that no blend mode was best for this gradient layer instead of the overlay blend mode. So no blend mode. I just wanted to tell you that. Okay, time in. I actually want to increase this effect, but I don't want it to start covering up the hill shade. So what I'm going to do is click the control key and drag this global background layer to make a duplicate of it and I'll pull it down beneath the two hill shade layers. Now while we're getting closer, our colors are still off and unfortunately they're off in different directions. The land needs to be much more yellow and the sea needs to be much more blue. I can't do a single filter to achieve that direction in my imagery. So what I'm gonna have to do is use a vector overlay of the ocean and a vector overlay of the land and tint each one of those independent of each other. Here we go. And for the oceans, I'll give this a gradient fill, no stroke. Similarly, it'll be linear, continuous, full height. And we'll go from this blue-gray dust color at the top to a more green influence at the bottom. And now if I apply a vivid light blend mode, the oceans are tinted in the direction that I like. I'm gonna soften it a little bit by just making this 50% transparent. And similarly for the land, we'll tint it with the gradient that we're looking for, getting rid of this stroke, gradient fill, linear, continuous. This time we'll go 45 degrees, so the light's coming from over here, full size, and Let's open up the color scheme properties and fine tune this. The brightest area, that nice specular reflection on the land, will go with this yucca yellow. And then we'll bring this down just under half. We'll give it a like a rose sort of color and make it mostly transparent. And then this upper end can be 
fully transparent. We don't need this. Make it essentially invisible. We'll hit OK. Apply it. And now we'll use the overlay blend to mix them. We have something pretty close to our reference image. But when I look at the big old reference globe stock art, I see it's got like a little bit of a texture. I, want, I actually wonder if it's an, a real photograph of a textured globe somewhere. It's impressive. And that's, that's what makes it look real is that texture. How do I add texture? We don't have a grain filter in Pro. How can I get it? Well, I've got you covered. I'm going to add from Living Atlas a watercolor paper texture. So I'll add watercolor paper texture, hit OK. And it's hidden because it renders underneath all the image layers. I'm gonna drag it right here underneath the land color. It's pretty subtle, but do you see like the little bumpy woven texture of watercolor paper appearing now? But I don't want the grayscales to wash out all the work I've done in making my globe kind of vibrant. So in the good old appearance tab, I'm gonna set this to good old overlay. Then the dark and light spots of this bumpy watercolor texture will inform the underlying hues and will just look a little bit better. But I wanna see more of it. How do I make this watercolor paper texture stronger? I'll hold the control key and drag a second copy. Why have one watercolor paper texture layer when you can have two? Now, instead of boosting the brightness so much, which is happening here, I'm only gonna keep the dark shadowy portions of the stippled texture. So I'll choose multiply, which is only a darkening pass. And I like it. I like it. There's still more to do because I haven't given it a big bright specular reflection up here and I haven't given it its little gradient blue background. Ready? We're going to need to create a layout. So I will insert a new layout and I'll pick a custom page size because I want this to fit perfectly on somebody's screen. So I'm shooting for 1920 width by 1080 height, but page units are all physical here. So I want pixels. I'll pick point, which is the closest thing to a pixel, but I'm going to uh, open up a calculator and figure out what I should set the points to. So if I want it to be 1920, that's 1440 points. 1080 height is going to be 810 points. Okay, then the first step will be in now that we've got this new layout. I'll get rid of this guy for now. Now that we've got this new layout, I'm going to insert a map. I have to put something in it. I'll pour my map into it. Drag snapping to the boundaries of my layout. And here we are. And I want to reposition this, of course. So I'm going to right click this and choose activate. Alternatively, I could right click map frame here and choose activate. Boom. This punches us into a navigation mode. It pokes us into the actual 3D map. And with the center scroll wheel clicked on my mouse, I'll click that. And then I've got like this crazy amount of control. And I'll set it to a tilt like so. Swing it around here like my reference map has. I don't know, it's kind of like this. Zoom in slightly by right clicking and dragging toward me. That zooms in in 3D. So, little keyboard tricks, not keyboard tricks, mouse tricks. I don't know. Whatever. This, this looks reasonably close. I'll exit and take a look at what we've got. We have a map inside a layout. This map has a one pixel black border around it by default. We need to destroy that pixel. So I'll double click this to open up its map frame properties and a little paintbrush says, hey look, I've given you a one point border around everything and I'll just remove that. At this point, we are free to draw a rectangle here and fill it with a nice little gradient blue background that matches our clip art. Let's do that now insert once more in the graphics and text area I've got a rectangle option and I'll snap it to the corners and I'm gonna drag this underneath my map frame because I want it to be the background I want it to render behind the map I can double click this or right click it and choose properties and now I have control over 
the symbol, which is really just a polygon, just like any other map polygon would be. I've got that border there by default. I'll get rid of that and I'll give this a gradient fill. And you've seen me do this a few times so far. Instead of buffered, I'll do linear. Instead of discrete, discrete's the worst. I'll do continuous. I love continuous. Okay. I'll give it a slightly tilted angle, 135. So it's kind of one color over here and transitions to another color over here in the corner. And those colors, first of all, I'll set it to fill the whole size, height? I, I don't know. Um, and I'll set these colors, which I know to be, I've sampled them with the eyedropper. This hex value, which I have on my clipboard, no transparency. So solid kind of powder blue to a solid slightly darker powder blue. How about that? See? Hit apply. Get rid of this. I love it. It's all coming together. Now I'm going to duplicate this by hitting copy and then pasting it in the layout. I made a Duplicate of that crazy wreck. Oh no, I covered everything up. What have I done? That's okay. I need to create a little sunshine, extreme overhead lighting, harsh, garish lighting effect from that 1960s like globe clip art. So let's do this. Come into the symbol just like we did before, right here. And this gradient is going to be more top down. So Let's see, 225, that's pretty cool. Let me just tweak it a little bit this way. Okay, it's going to go from this sort of creamy yellowish color. I'm going to knock this transparency down to 50%. So 50% transparent yellow, okay. And I'll do the same color here but it's going to be hundred percent transparent. So we have just like this ah, angelic sunlight kind of coming down onto our globe. Let's see. There it is. See the difference it makes too much. It's too much. Okay. I'm going to double click, come into the symbol and I'll go to the layers, select this gradient fill. And this, it's covering the whole distance. I just really wanted to hit this top part of the globe. So I'll make this like 60%. So it's just more in the corner and apply. Oh yeah, that's better. There we go. Now I'm not washing out all that work that I had done, but I'm gaining this kind of crazy overhead light specular reflection from a fake light that doesn't exist, but we do what we can. We've got this really fun, clip art sort of 3D globe that we can crank out versions of for our graphic design friends. They're gonna love it. All kinds of clip art globes. Oh, you can turn it? You can show a different continent? Oh my goodness, I didn't know this was even possible. Thought I had to buy these in a pack of stock images from some website. No way. You're a map maker. You have the power to create actual maps and share them with your graphic design friends or marketing friends. Okay, have fun, enjoy, happy mapping.